Hello, my name is Harry Lythel. Although I'm British, I hold a Swedish amateur radio license, SM0VPO. I don't get much opportunity to operate these days mainly because I have so little time. But here I found the time to create a collection of video sequences that show you the basics of soldering. I will assume that you've no previous experience, but you do need to be keen to learn. I will show you the basic tools you will need to use to make a sound soldered joint between wires and on printer circuit boards. I will also show you how to desolder and to remove components from a board without damaging the board itself. But before we go on, let us consider what is a solder joint? Well, solder is not some sort of metallic super glue. You can't simply stick two wires together by trapping them in a big glob of molten metal. This misunderstanding is probably one of the biggest causes of joint failures for the new beginner. So let us get you over that hurdle now. To solder properly, you need to thoroughly clean the surfaces and then apply a solder iron to heat the wires so it will become hotter than the melting point of solder. The solder wire is applied to the wire. You do not apply solder to the iron. When the solder melts, it will flow over the surface of the wire, actually dissolving a microscopic layer of the surface metal. When the joint cools, there will be a fusion between the solder and the copper, creating a perfect soldered joint. Electrical solder melts at 183 degrees centigrade, 361 degrees Fahrenheit. But your solder iron needs to be run much hotter than this, or the wire of the components will suck away heat from the joint and prevent the solder from melting. For normal light electronic solder iron, the iron will be run at around 280 to 300 degrees centigrade. But for heavy electrical work, the iron may need to be run much higher, around 360 degrees centigrade. Some older printer circuit boards used bonded paper and were easily damaged with just 250 degrees centigrade. The solder we use for electrical work is a blend of tin and lead. Now tin melts at 232 degrees centigrade and lead needs much more, it needs 327 to uh, make it become a liquid. But both lead and tin have a temperature range where the metals are neither liquid nor solid, a sort of plastic region. But if the two metals are mixed in the correct proportions, then this plastic state is almost eliminated, so that as the mixture cools, it suddenly changes from a liquid to a solid with no intermediate state. This condition occurs when the mixture is 63% tin, and 37% lead. The joint must be kept absolutely still while solder melts and changes the state from liquid to a solid. So the absence of this non-solid state is good news for us. Normally we just call it 60-40 so when you buy solder you ask for 60-40 solder. Normal electrical solder is supplied on rolls as a wire and comes in various thicknesses. The wire has got a capillary tube down the centre that contains a flux. Now flux has a much lower melting point than solder, but it travels over the surface of the metals and prevents them oxidising when heated. Without flux you would never be able to solder, because copper, brass and iron would combine with oxygen to form a barrier against solder. Unfortunately we cannot solder to aluminium. That would have been too convenient, wouldn't it? Aluminium needs expensive and specialised soldering equipment involving an inert gas atmosphere. It is possible to make solder that has a melting point much lower than 180 degrees centigrade. Blending solder with metallic mercury or quicksilver can do this. It is quite possible to get solder that will melt in your hand although this, this will be both expensive and useless.
But the technique was used extensively in the 1940s and 50s to make thermal fuses for valve transformers. When a spring-loaded contact was released, if the low melting point solder became too hot. So now you have an idea as to just what is involved with soldering electrical joints. So please follow me now in a journey into the workshop where we will assemble and then disassemble some electronic projects. But first, a word about tools.